My name is Tom Miller and I'm the director of the Chesapeake Biological Lab. I'm sitting today in our library archive and it's one of my favourite places on campus. It's a light, airy room with spectacular views over the mouth of the Patuxent River. It's a great place to come and sit and think or chat with your colleagues. But that's not really why it's my favourite place on campus. I think it's my favourite place on campus because in this room I'm surrounded by the work of generations of CBL scientists who've been conducting fundamental research on the Chesapeake Bay and the environment to help inform environmental policy for almost a hundred years now, since our founding in 1925. Let me show you some of my favourite things. Our first stop is at the library table. The table itself is made from an old oyster dredge and an old attic window. We really do reuse and recycle everything here at CBL. And on the table is a book of maps. We found this book when we were renovating the library under a pile of old reports and photocopies. We weren't quite sure what we had discovered at first. It's a book of charts of the Maryland Oyster Survey from 1906 to 1912. But when we opened the book and looked at the inside cover, we found the signature of Reginald Truitt, the founder of CBL, and the date 1925. This is probably the first book that CBL ever owned. So it is of significance for that reason alone. My favorite chart in the book is chart 20. This is the chart for the area around Solomons. The chart marks out known oyster bars carefully with every corner located. The charts were produced by the Maryland Shellfish Commission and the US Coast Guard's Geodetic Survey. The maps are signed by the chief of the Geodetic Survey, Mr. Yates. And so these bars are known as the Yates Bars, and they still figure in Maryland Oyster Management today. What I like particularly about this map is that you can see the coffee stains and the pencil marks where generations of CBL scientists have debated where they should sample and what they are trying to achieve. It very much connects us to the past. Let's move on. Our second stop is immediately behind the Book of Yates bars, and it's a bookcase full of all of the journal articles and the reports that CBL has produced since its founding in 1925, up here to my right, all the way up to the present day, down to my left. Let's look at the first one. The first contribution from CBL was in 1927 by Reginald Truitt, and it's entitled Aspects of the Oyster Season in Maryland. Truitt writes, For fully three decades now, there has been an almost steady decline in Maryland's oyster production, until those charged with the industry's welfare indeed those who have the state's interest at heart, are alarmed for its future. Words written in 1927 that are just as true today. Our third stop on the tour of the archive room is the bookcase on the back wall, which contains master's theses and doctoral dissertations and some of our rare books. It's framed by the first ever Truett Award, which was given to Senator Bernie Fowler for his groundbreaking work monitoring water quality in the Patuxent River. Many of the names on the spines of these books are unknown to me. Many were students while I have been here at CBL. Many of them have gone on to impactful careers. One dissertation pulled at random is from Dr. Heather Stapleton who's currently a professor at Duke University and one is, was one of our speakers 
in our Science for Citizens series last year. Moving on, we find our rare books. Let's look at one of them. This is one of my favourite books in our collection. It was published in London in 1859, and it's a book of prints of British seaweeds. If I turn the page to one of my favourites, this is a green seaweed, Halicerus polysoides, that is common around the British coasts. But the quality of the printing is absolutely spectacular. And the book is full of many beautiful prints such as this. It's an example of science as much as a creative activity as it is a meticulous science. This is just an example of our collection of rare books. That completes our tour of the archive. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you find some of the other videos on this site interesting. Thanks for your time.